The scene opens with a rather ominous atmosphere, with mist hanging thickly in the air and the sky shrouded in heavy clouds, creating an eerie and cold ambience, below the misty street, a group of people has gathered, comprising individuals of various ages and backgrounds, the first to speak is a man with a long scar running across his face, yet his allure remains undiminished by the mark, my name is Mormont Carl, he begins, his voice commanding attention, I'm a mercenary, do any of you know, where we are? Responding to the stern man's question is an old man with a face deeply lined with wrinkles, stroking his beard in contemplation, I'm Lyle, owner of a woodworking shop in Adora, he introduces himself, as for where here is, I'm afraid I don't know either. Following the shop owner is a stout figure, his face etched with panic and uncertainty, grit, an employee at Hysia's antique store, adds, I'm clueless as well, we seem to be in quite the predicament, despite the varied backgrounds, they all share the same bewildered response, none of them knows their current location, the situation appears increasingly dire as the mystery deepens. The most striking figure among the group below is a redhead girl, her hand resting on her hip, looking just as bewildered as the rest, unlike the others, she hasn't shown much concern on her face, with her tall, sturdy frame, she exudes an air of strength that sets her apart, my name is Jenna, she introduces herself, I live in the woods, and I'm as clueless as the rest of you about what just happened. Another standout in the group is a young man with a complexion so fair it prompts curiosity, Han Islet, a farmer by trade, echoes the sentiments of confusion, I'm in the same boat, no clue whatsoever, he adds. As soon as they finish speaking, a chorus of voices rises, each person expressing their bewilderment and discomfort, it seems that all 11 individuals are equally clueless about why they're here and where here even is, the atmosphere is tense as they exchange thoughts and speculations, could this be a dream, despite it being the harvest season, there's little joy to be found in their current situation. A man, unable to contain his anxiety, speculates aloud, suggesting they might have been transported here by a wizard, perhaps to be turned into laboratory rats for experiments, Mormont Carl immediately stands up to rebuke the notion, shouting back, stop with your nonsense, meanwhile, Lyle, the shopkeeper, adds his own perspective, suggesting that the only certainty right now is that they are all newcomers, he proposes that they might uncover more clues if they continue communicating with each other. Suddenly, a beam of light pierces through the gloom, and a petite fairy in a cute black dress appears, as everyone is still in shock at her sudden appearance, they are even more stunned by her next announcement, Master is preparing to open a time rift, so get ready to fight, she declares. As the bewildered group tries to grasp what is happening, the appearance of the fairy captivates their attention, perhaps most striking about her is her tiny size, which seems utterly incongruous with the gravity of the situation, despite the chaos surrounding them, all eyes are drawn to her diminutive form, a stark contrast to the ominous circumstances they find themselves in. The man facing the strange creature curiously asks who she is, to which the fairy promptly replies, call me Isil, a fairy tasked with managing this place, please abide by the rules if you don't want to get hurt. Mormont Carl, with a displeased expression, interrupts the conversation, questioning if she's the one who brought them here, Isil looks back at him and retorts, why do you need to know? Clearly, Isil's response irks Mormont Carl, he immediately draws his sword, questioning how she can remain calm after kidnapping them like this, I'll make you spill everything you know, he declares angrily. Unfazed by Mormont Carl's menacing demeanor, Isil remains calm and composed, urging him to hold back if he wishes to live. However, unable to contain his anger, Mormont Carl's fury erupts uncontrollably, he brandishes his sword, ready to engage in combat at any moment, scoffing at the tiny creature's audacity, how could such a small creature like her dare to be so bold? With a smirk full of confidence, Isil responds disdainfully to Mormont Carl's aggression, ha, huh? why do you have to make everything so complicated, she retorts, I'll straighten out that attitude of yours. After the bold and arrogant challenge from Mormont Carl, he is immediately met with a swift and precise strike, a dagger slicing through his neck, the speed is so overwhelming that he barely has time to register what happened. Mormont Carl's head is now severed from his body, the announcement echoes with an air of authority and a warning, Mormont Two Stars has returned to the embrace of the goddess, and his battle spirit will be eternally commemorated, the cause of death, stress. The onlookers are stunned, Shocked by the rapid turn of events, didn't I want him to stop if he wanted to continue living, if only he had listened to me, this regrettable incident wouldn't have occurred. With an air of deadly seriousness, anyone harboring intentions of attacking me should prepare to meet their end, that was self-defense, clear, the once adorable face is now gone, replaced by menacing eyes and a chilling warning. 
Afterward, a tumultuous uproar ensues, what's happening, is he really dead, what did she do, just say what you want, and we'll comply, the voices clamor in confusion, Isil responds bluntly, her tone unwavering, what I want is simple, listen closely to my command, fight well, and emerge victorious, it's as straightforward as that. As they organize their formations, assembling their hero teams, a voice from somewhere announces information to everyone. Lyle, 1 star, has joined party 1, Lanto, 1 star, has joined party 1, Marilyn, 1 star, has joined party 1, Calcule, 1 star, has joined party 1, Jackson, 1 star, has joined party 1, Isil looks up and announces, finally, the master has begun the game. Isil shouts to everyone, get ready, everyone. The time rift cracks open. Immediately after Isil's command, a rift begins to form in the air, gradually widening from a small crack to a larger fissure, expanding further and further. Everyone is on high alert, astonished and fearful as they witness the unfolding situation, each person's face reflects a mixture of surprise and apprehension. See that door there, enter it if you don't want to end up like Mormont, Isil threatens ominously, she gives no one any chance, instilling a sense of dread and urgency among the group. However, Isil's composure is disrupted as a voice suddenly emerges from behind, wait, Isil, turning back with anger and impatience, Isil encounters Han Islet without hesitation, it's you again, what more do you want, Isil's patience is wearing thin. Han Islet doesn't hesitate to address the issue directly, surely, you don't want us to climb the tower again, at the very least, the game master should summon some weapons, we're all one-star novices, and you wouldn't want to send us into a death trap. The tower again, Jenna is completely bewildered by what's happening and what everyone is talking about, Han Islet continues, mentioning a valuable two-star hero who recently perished, can't you at least provide us with some basic equipment for protection, Isil's demeanor softens slightly, considering Han Islet's words and the necessity of better preparation for their perilous journey. Mormont Carl, two stars, level 1, a rookie mercenary, with stats as follows, strength 14, intelligence 10, vitality 12, agility 12, and basic swordsmanship skills, Isil ponders for a moment before conceding, that makes sense. She immediately sends a request to the master, dear master, the heroes currently lack any equipment, could they be provided with some gear to enhance their combat capabilities, shortly after, a few announcements follow. Heroes will be equipped with a default wooden sword upon joining, if you deposit weapons into the weapon vault, heroes will be equipped with those, remember, you can request new equipment. Dear Master, prepare to summon 10x, summon 10x, 50,000 gold, and whatever has been received, iron sword, primitive bow, and wooden staff, she concludes. The shopkeeper notices Han's familiarity with the surroundings and asks, your name is Han, right? What do you know about this place, Han Islet replies, not much more than anyone else, because I haven't been here for long. Jenna looks over with a curious expression, not long, could it be that this guy, she trails off, her expression turning serious, the only thing I know is that being slow means death. It's best to start gathering weapons at that house over there, Han Islet suggests, pointing to the building across the street, it's about to begin. Still, some people fail to grasp the situation, what do you mean, start, someone asks, Han Islet doesn't say much, simply stating, the battle, immediately, someone responds in shock, did you just say battle? Others react differently, some panic, admitting they're completely clueless about fighting, while others remain calm, prioritizing acquiring weapons first. Seemingly infected by the sense of urgency, moments later, everyone begins scrambling for weapons, each claiming their own, this one's mine, I got it first. Despite their initial chaos, everyone manages to hold weapons and stand before the gate, attempting to compose themselves. Suddenly, they notice a peculiar occurrence, what happened to the bodies, was it some kind of magic, before the man can finish his question, Isil interrupts, shut up, then, five figures, including Lyle, step through the gate, signaling the beginning. Lyle's hand passes through the rift, now transformed into a large vortex, he recoils in astonishment and steps back. What on earth is this, Lyle exclaims in panic, while Isil, truly losing her patience, snaps, stop fooling around and step into it already, help me out. Amidst the chaos, Jenna notices Han examining a shield, despite the commotion, she wonders if she should follow suit. Unable to contain her curiosity, Jenna turns to Han and asks, do you know what's about to happen next, why do we need weapons, where are we, and who is that little fairy, 
After listening for a moment, Han responds, You're right, there are many questions, but for now, we just need to rush into battle and kill all enemies, as for the rest, you'll have to find the answers yourself. Marilyn, one star, has returned to the embrace of the goddess, and his battle spirit will be remembered eternally, a message from the void interrupts Han's thoughts, leaving him stunned. So, this is why they're just one star, Han mutters, contemplating the revelation, meanwhile, Jenna remains utterly clueless, asking, what's happening, what just happened, but Han responds to Jenna's question with a cold, silent stare. The messages continue to pour in, Team 1 has been wiped out completely, Team 1 wiped out already, so fast, Han muses, maintaining his calm demeanor, in contrast, Isil is on the verge of losing her mind, useless vermin, they couldn't even handle the first floor, and they're all dead. Setting up the lineup, currently assembling the hero teams, Han 1 star, Lanto 1 star, Marilyn 1 star, Calcua 1 star, and Jackson 1 star have joined Team 1, Isil, enraged, gives the order, the rest of you, move out. It's our turn now, why haven't any of those who went ahead returned, at this moment, an elderly man speaks up, Miss Ferry, I suffer from severe joint inflammation and can't move much, please, may I be excused from the team, Jenna, puzzled, questions, but you were walking just fine earlier, weren't you, then suddenly, the pain returns, causing the old man to cry out. Ignoring the commotion, Han strides forward, paying no attention to those around him. Let's just go, we'll try to fight and survive together, Jenna suggests. But the old man remains adamant, I told you, I have joint inflammation, ignore it, Isil angrily interrupts, enough noise, shut up and get ready to move. Others are filled with apprehension, what does she want us to prepare for, I haven't held a spear in ages, one remarks. It seems like I have a stomachache, just let me go, the large man pleads, but despite his futile protests, he's dragged along and forced to pass through the gate. The atmosphere undergoes a complete transformation the moment they step away from that place, leaving everyone astonished. The most pressing question now is, where are they, the surroundings appear desolate, dilapidated, with no signs of life. As they look around, their attention is drawn to a temple nearby, speculations abound among the group. The air is filled with tension as a line of text appears in the sky, capturing everyone's attention. Main dungeon, current challenge level, floor 1, ascend the tower to save the dungeon, current floor, 0. As the announcement concludes, Han immediately shouts, snapping everyone's thoughts back into focus, don't lose focus, it's starting now. Suddenly, light envelopes everything, whether they are ready or not, they are now forced to fight to the end. The sky is radiant with sunlight, surrounded by desolate fields of grass, the atmosphere is incredibly strange, filled with tension. Everyone stands, looking around with apprehension, fear, and uncertainty. The man stands in awe before the current scene, unable to hold back his emotions, whoa, whoa, where are we, he mutters, his voice filled with confusion. Han, indifferent, doesn't even bother to turn back, responding coolly to the man's question, floor one mission type, subjugation, destroy all enemies, we're on the battlefield, he states matter-of-factly. Suddenly, the monsters, appearing out of nowhere, charge forward at a high frequency, armed with sharp swords and daggers, facing the horde without hesitation, Han reminds everyone, as I said, fight to live or die, so, heads up. The situation takes an unexpected turn as it seems they misunderstood Han's words, upon turning back, Han notices three of them immediately throwing away their weapons and running in disarray, leaving only Jenna standing by his side. Witnessing the person who moments ago was begging for mercy now leading the pack and running, Jenna couldn't help but shout in frustration, Hey old man, I thought you said you had arthritis, Jenna's panic causes her stats to drop by 30, just as they had recovered, the old man, ignoring her completely, continues to run away. However, due to their panic, the stats of all three individuals continue to decrease by 30, despite their efforts to flee, they are abruptly halted by an invisible wall, they can't take another step forward. Staring in astonishment at their situation, Jenna couldn't fathom how there could be an invisible barrier hindering them. Why can't we get out of this, oh, my back, let me out, I need to go, she exclaimed, her voice filled with urgency, echoed by the others who couldn't believe their eyes, the old man, his voice booming, his joints inflamed, was now exerting all his remaining strength against the invisible barrier, yelling, what is this wall, remove it at once. Each of them cried out, pleading in unison to break free. Han turned back with a face that spoke volumes of his helplessness, looking at the three of them, it was indeed a moment of utter embarrassment. 
Jenna, her body drenched in sweat, confronted the figure before her, Han. Can we escape if we defeat all the goblins? She asked desperately, needing an answer to this question right now. Han turned to look but didn't reply, his eyes conveyed everything? At that moment, the two of them stood on a battlefield, Han asked Jenna if she knew how to use a bow, mentioning that his father was a hunter, upon hearing this, Han quickly proposed a plan, he would charge into direct combat while she provided covering fire from a distance, could she manage it? Jenna hesitated, asking about the others, but all she received in response was a serious look from Han, focused on the battlefield ahead, don't worry about them, they're just useless, he said. A hiss emanated from the horde of monsters, sending shivers down their spines, their razor-sharp teeth seemed capable of crushing anything in their path. They're coming, Han pointed out, in front of them, the horde of monsters surged forward relentlessly, each one emanating a red glint of bloodlust, eager to kill and maim. Han gripped his sword and shield tightly, his gaze resolute, but deep down, a wave of turmoil surged within him, truth be told, he had never wielded a sword or shield before. The grotesque creatures, wielding shields and swords, charged forward recklessly, their intimidating red eyes and razor-sharp teeth bared as they advanced at an unbelievable speed. My name is Han Islet, but my real name is Han Siagen. He muttered to himself, it seemed like he had just fallen into a deadly RNG death trap. The battlefield was chaotic, and Han wielded his shield fiercely, resisting the onslaught of the monsters, they relentlessly advanced, but Han, using his sword and shield, managed to hold them back. The scene shifted, and the screen displayed a message connecting to servers, this was a mobile game released by Morbius Corporation Studio. The game's objective was to conquer a 100-floor tower, supporting heroes by creating resources and building bases, players needed to strategize and employ tactics to clear the tower completely. Just yesterday, I was living a normal life, Han muttered, bewildered, his phone screen displayed a long list of notifications, Pick Me Up had reached 100 million downloads, thanks to global support, event information, 1, receive 100 gems for logging in from January 27th to February 5th, with a chance to receive 1000 gems, 2, Masters will receive a free premium hero summon upon login, summoning premium heroes guarantees at least a 3-star hero, 3, at the end of the event, a new high difficulty. Dungeon will appear. Han Siagen held his phone, pondering the new notifications from the game, the emergence of a new dungeon had piqued his curiosity, and he was eager to explore the latest event announcements, this budget game finally had an event worth looking forward to. Han Siagen was a gaming master, well versed in the rules of the game, hero levels ranged from 1 to a maximum of 7 stars, despite countless free summons, he had never obtained a hero above 5 stars, contemplating, Han Siagen considered that the dungeon might offer fate scrolls at a low rate items crucial for summoning 7 star heroes, it made sense to participate. Pick Me Up differed from other character building games in its harsh rules, regardless of the care and affection poured into a character, once dead, they remain dead, unable to be resurrected, this meant that whether a character was 1 or 6 stars, once they died, it was over, exploring dungeons required a one-time team formation, at that moment, a notification appeared on the screen, new dungeon has opened. Warning, 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 a series of urgent red alerts blared, causing all members of Team 38 to feel a collective sense of fear. Subsequently, new notifications appeared on the screen, Diora's 6-star stats decreased by 30%, Nicholas's 5-star stats decreased by 30%, Kent's 6-star stats decreased by 30%, Akela's 5-star stats decreased by 30%, Melky's 5-star stats decreased by 30%, Diora, the 6-star, suggests retreat. As Han Siagen held his device, witnessing the unfolding situation, he couldn't help but wonder what they were afraid of, however, upon reflection, Han Siagen thought, it's not a big deal, I just need to observe the boss's tactics, Diora, the six-star hero, was feeling anxious. Suddenly, a dark figure appeared on the screen, effortlessly using its power to kill the in-game characters, what caught Han Siagen's attention was the level of this dark figure, level 999, what was going on, was it a bug? Han Siagen couldn't help but be astonished by the terrifying level of the dark figure, in just a moment, it had defeated its opponents effortlessly, clearly, it was a system error, however, it seemed that the situation didn't stop there, a series of notifications flooded in, Diora, the sixth star, has returned to the embrace of the goddess, her fighting spirit will be remembered forever, Nicholas, the five star, has returned to the embrace of the goddess, his fighting spirit will be remembered forever. 
Kent, the five star, has returned to the embrace of the goddess, his fighting spirit will be remembered forever. It was the dark figure that had defeated everyone, they were wiped out before they could even comprehend its fighting style, Han Siajin realized they had gained nothing, it seemed that this single entity could defeat them all. The screen zoomed in, enlarging the image of the dark creature multiple times, a black figure with swirling white eyes, forming endless circles, or a demonic grin full of madness, threatening any player. You've been spotted, suddenly, these words appeared, making Han Siajin jump, what was this, another tactic from it, the game should have ended, shouldn't it, everything around him suddenly plunged into darkness, what was happening, he couldn't see anything. Create a new account, a message appeared in the midst of the dark void, just that. The screen frame appeared once again, prompting the selection of a name with two to six letters and no special characters, there were two options to press, choose or not, what was this about, what was happening. Without waiting for Han Siajin to think, a notification appeared in the endless night screen, Water, this name is available, will you use this name, yes or no? Han Siajin was in a state of vague uncertainty, Water, was it trying to write whatever, before he could ponder further, the screen had already automatically chosen yes. He hadn't typed anything, what was going on, did it just agree on its own? Water welcomes you to the world of Pick Me Up. The notification box proceeded to offer suggestions to the player, would you like to play the tutorial, upon completion, you will receive a reward, choose yes or no. At that moment, the atmosphere shifted dramatically, even the surroundings seemed to be swirling around, Han Siajin suddenly woke up in a completely unfamiliar situation, surrounded by swirling smoke and flames, leaving him dumbfounded and rooted to the spot. In a small village in the territory of Hyam, a boy named Han Islet found himself amidst the chaos, the scorching heat and raging flames made it difficult for Han Siajin to breathe, however, the current situation left him even more bewildered, what's going on, this is Tayanir, the land of peace for both humans and non-humans. An unknown enemy had invaded this tranquil continent, master, if you wish to save the world, climb the tower, countless heroes will stand by your side. The village where Han Siajin stood was engulfed in fierce flames, overwhelmed by chaos. Standing at the edge of the fiery sea, suddenly there was a hand clinging tightly to the wall as if trying to reach up, this noise inevitably caught Han Siajin's attention, he turned around to look. Ring, a notification appeared on the screen, instructing him with a task, defeat the goblin invaders in the village, Han Siajin held a sword in his hand, surprised by the text floating in the air, goblin. What was this message? Without waiting for Han Siajin to digest the large amount of information he had just received, a goblin wielding a sword appeared in front of him, menacingly advancing. From surprise to horror, fear spread through his eyes, cold sweat ran down his back, could this be real, Han Siajin never expected what was happening before his eyes. But soon enough, I realized that this was indeed the truth, hesitation would mean death for someone, the goblin swung its deathly blade towards Han Siajin. Unable to stand still and wait for death, Han Siajin immediately swung his sword in hand to fiercely counter the goblin's attack, the sword clashed against the sharp blade, both sides fiercely struggling against each other. The attack power of this goblin was terrifyingly strong, and Han Siajin exerted all his strength to block the incoming blow of the sword. Suddenly, at this moment, a notification frame appeared, the battle would begin automatically, let the artificial intelligence system of the hero execute advanced close combat. Using all the strength he could muster, Han Siajin immediately swung his sword, knocking the goblin in front of him backward, that strike caused the monster's weapon to fly away, sending it out of the combat zone. Not letting the opponent catch his breath, Han Siajin quickly wielded his sword and struck forward, roaring as he landed the final blow. The event happened in a flash, leaving Han Siajin astonished, but he couldn't recall the feeling of killing another creature. Having passed the level, Han leveled up by one star and was receiving rewards, check your mailbox, the message in the void caught Han Siajin's attention, what was happening, was this inside the game or something else? However, Han Siajin immediately realized the surrounding scene, opening his eyes wide with astonishment. This familiar scene was from Pick Me Up, both the sky and the surroundings exactly like the game he was playing. Master, before continuing to the next level, try summoning an ally, touch the summon tab in your menu, the message instructed, it also mentioned a special first-time service, offering 500 gems for one high-level summon. The familiar game processes bewildered Han Siajin even more, 
leaving him puzzled about what was happening. Right at that moment, in front of him, a door of light opened, its radiance seemingly swallowing him whole. As the light dimmed, a figure appeared before Han Siajin, clad in armor and wielding a rare sword, it was astonishing, Master Waterer has received a five-star hero, Shay, the message announced. Summoning, it's a summoning session, meaning I could be summoned too. Han Siajin kept speculating about the ongoing situation, as if a hero was being summoned for the player of Pick Me Up, at this moment, the summoned person also spoke up, I've been summoned, who are you? The screen displayed an introduction, Shea Radisteri, 5-star knight profession, strength 19, intelligence 10, vitality 18, agility 22, combat logic skill level 1, saber mastery skill level 1, knight's determination level 1. I am Shea Radisteri, a knight, ha, Han Siajin, isn't it? What a strange name, not Shea Radisteri, no, Han Siajin. At this moment, a notification popped up, Try forming a team with any hero, drag and drop the hero into the team tab and create a unique team, Master, Han 1 and Shay 5 are now a team. Master Water led me and Shay back into the dungeon, you're the new guy, aren't you, you don't seem impressive at all, Shay swung his sword at a goblin, calmly asking Han Siajin, this is my first time, unlike me, someone who has never held a sword, a 4 star hero Shay defeated 5 goblins in the blink of an eye. After the level, Shea 5 leveled up, sending rewards, check your mailbox, it was an absolute difference in skills between us, with a 3 star gap, I have nothing more to say. But the problem arose afterward, the notification frame appeared again, master, the brave heroes have completed their battle, the final instruction awaits you, the way to make heroes stronger is through synthesis, the door has opened, touch the synthesis tab in the menu. Han Siajin seemed to realize where the problem lay, it was over for him. But right at that moment, a small fairy suddenly appeared, Hey, you, are you not going? Han Siajin turned back with a skeptical look, The master is waiting for you. Han Siajin raised his head, filled with many question marks in his mind, Then suddenly, he exclaimed, startling the fairy in front of him. Isil, that's right, I am Isil, no, wait, how do you know my name, who are you? Pretending to hear a foolish question, Han Siajin thought to himself, Hmm, I must surely know her already, since I've played Pick Me Up so much, I am Han Siajin, Isil immediately took out a statistical book, Han Siajin, it can't be, not Han Islet, right? Following a series of interrogative questions from Han Siajin, Isil was bombarded with inquiries, what, why do you look different in the picture, Han Islet was born in Teanir of the Heim Peninsula, you don't look like that, faced with these questions, Han Siajin began to grow impatient, I am Han Siajin, born in Seoul, Gangseogu, now kindly returned me to where I was having a polite conversation. Seemingly grasping the anomaly, Isa leaned in closer to Han Siajin and asked, You're from Earth, aren't you? You couldn't be from Mars, could you? Receiving an answer beyond her imagination, the fairy Isa roared in astonishment, How could this happen? I must be going crazy. Unable to stop, the fairy Isa shouted at Han Siajin, Now, you go first, if I go in, I'll die, you can't die, you'll just be synthesized, that's all. Regardless, just go in, Isil cruelly pushed Han Siajin through the door without mercy. It was noisy, Shea stood silently inside, unable to help but assess the man in front of him, however, Han Siajin had nothing to say. Master, synthesis begins, entering the main door is the start of the battle, Han Siajin's hands began to be enveloped in a strong green light. Here we go, Han Siajin realized the world around him was starting to change along with the green light. Synthesis, enhancing power by combining two heroes, one of the heroes becomes the sacrifice to boost the stats of the remaining hero, during this process, one of the heroes will undoubtedly be destroyed. Han Siajin's worry tensed his body, the issue was that he was a one-star hero, while Shea was a four-star knight, a normal player had no reason to save him or kill Shea. Seemingly realizing the continuation of his unfortunate fate, Han Siajin thought silently, am I going to die, who's foolish enough to synthesize a 4-star hero with a 1-star hero? After a while, the notification frame appeared, synthesis complete, instead of disappearing, Han Siajin felt a strange transformation in his body, so, it's over. Shay, the 4-star hero, was fading into the light, and this notification completely shocked Han Siajin, why are you disappearing? It doesn't make sense, you're a 4 star hero, and I'm only 1 star. However, Shay's response to Han Siajin's question was dismissive and accepting, I wasn't chosen, that's all there is to it, then she slowly vanished. 
Before completely disappearing, Shay managed to turn back and give Han Siajin a smile, whispering, the rest is up to you, Han. Shay disappeared before Han Siajin's bewildered gaze, leaving him utterly confused. The scene around him shifted back to the initial battle, a horrifying scream rang out, followed by a system notification, Grit has returned to the embrace of the goddess, his fighting spirit will be remembered forever. Jenna couldn't help but stop and shout, don't ignore this, if you do, you'll die, old man, fight back, she screamed in frustration at the man trying to escape from the monster chasing after him. At this moment, Han Siajin was struggling with a fierce goblin wielding sharp fangs, he exerted all his strength to block the enemy's attacks, reflecting on what had happened, despite everything, he had managed to survive. The hero synthesis mechanism involved dragging and dropping, designed for sacrificing one hero into another, however, the player's choice of Han Siajin instead of Shea remained a question mark, it could be a slip of the hand or a careless decision. Han Siajin felt fortunate that Shea's death was due to the player's foolish mistake, it wasn't unexpected from a game like this, after defeating a group of monsters, Han Siajin shouted to Jenna, what about the other two monsters? Jenna, still fighting, replied, I'll take care of one monster, but what about the others? She couldn't help but think about their teammates who had come here with them, but Han Siajin brushed aside that thought, focusing on the present. Unnoticed, a monster approached from behind and struck Han Siajin, he cried out in pain but quickly regained his composure, gripping his sword tightly. I don't know why I was summoned in to pick me up, but I know one thing, Han Siajin thought to himself, that I, Han Siajin, have been summoned as a one-star hero, Han Islet. The wretched creature, right after being struck by a surprise attack, Han Islet swiftly turned around and delivered a decisive blow to the monster, its body tortured under the edge of his sword. Just before entering this world, the monster, bogged at level 999, was laughing loudly. That wretched creature, Han Siajin, or rather Han Islet, silently determined that it must have been the one pulling him into this demonic game. The anger blazed in his eyes, and Han Islet couldn't help but want to destroy the monster right then and there, he shouted loudly, you picked the wrong person. After defeating the final monster, Han Islet was injured in his right arm, he sat down, exhausted, clutching his injured arm tightly, seeing this from afar, Jenna walked over. Her face was filled with concern as she looked at Han Islet's serious wound, his arm had been severed when the monster attacked, but he reassured her, I'll be fine when I return. Players don't have much say in battles because most of the fights happen automatically by the heroes, however, the game still boasts a global player base of 100 million. The reason is that they can observe this world like a deity, gazing up at the crimson sky with a giant eye monitoring all the activities of the characters in the game. Han Islet couldn't help but grimace and say, isn't that amusing? I'm also a player who enjoys picking myself up, creating items, devising strategies, nurturing heroes, and uncovering hidden factors, even if the game is considered like crap, don't give up. In this fight for survival, giving up means death, but for Han Islet, this game cannot be lost, his eyes gleamed with unwavering determination, watch me survive until the end, he thought to himself. After completing the battle, the notification frame appeared, Jenna 1 leveled up, rewards, 2000 gold, doubled iron ore, doubled copper, and one additional stone. Stepping out of the battle, Han Islet devoted himself to training diligently every day, pushing his limits, I have to accept this, it's time for me to stop behaving like a child, he resolved. I am currently inside Pick Me Up, summoned as a one-star hero. There are two ways for a hero to die, in battle and through fusion, however, being a one-star hero, the prospects are grim within Pick Me Up, we are merely tools, the most useless among all. Stats are abysmal, and the potential for growth is extremely low, at this level, escaping the inevitable fusion threat is impossible, a notification pops up, Han Islet, 1 star hero, level 5, apprentice profession, strength 15, intelligence 15, vitality 15, agility 15, skills none. In this precarious situation hanging by a thread, I must become stronger, survive, seek revenge, and return, if I don't become stronger, it's all just wishful thinking. I don't know how things will unfold from now on, but if I don't adapt quickly, I'll die, if I don't accept it, I'll be swallowed whole, this reminds me of my military service, damn it. Being strong physically alone is not enough, I must also be mentally resilient, I won't survive if I can't stay calm. 
You can survive on your own when you're young, don't forget that, even without parents or anyone else by your side, you can still manage to survive, recall those tough times. Han Islet is putting in relentless effort day and night, he tirelessly spends time training, challenging himself until sweat pours like a stream, muscles ache, and strength is depleted. Seeing this stranger continuously working out, Jenna approaches, curious, what are you doing? Han Islet, training to kill monsters, why, Jenna couldn't help but frown at Han Islet's strange behavior, why are you behaving so rudely, I've been searching for you for a long time. No response to her questioning, a silence hangs in the air, Jenna is unsure of how to proceed. After a while, she decides to speak up, I've been thinking all night about what we need to do from now on, first, we can't escape from here, can we? Jenna takes her bow, aiming at the scarecrow across from her, because my father is a hunter, I often enjoy shooting arrows whenever I have free time, I won't interfere with you. After aiming and confirming the target, Jenna releases the bowstring, sending the arrow towards the scarecrow, I don't think anything will change if I just cry and complain. The arrow hits the bullseye of the target accurately, right in the center of the scarecrow's face, you know how to survive here, don't you? Wiping the sweat dripping from his forehead to his neck, Han Islet turns to Jenna and asks, was yesterday your first real combat experience? Jenna responds immediately, yes, I was just indoors all day, Han Islet continues, how's your archery? Jenna replies, it's alright. Hearing Jenna's response, Han Islet couldn't help but glance over to assess her, Jenna Shirai, 1 star, level 2, apprentice profession, strength 11, intelligence 11, vitality 11, agility 11, novice archery skill. She has increased her four attributes just after yesterday, if her overall development is low, she compensates with a prerequisite skill, even though she's only at one star, despite her initial clumsiness in her first combat, she managed to shoot down a goblin, it's quite remarkable. She seems determined not to perish and has a clear next step, Han Islet remarks after gathering all the information, truly a rough gem, he adds, alright, I'll help her. Following Han Islet's words, a hand suddenly reaches out. My father once said that if I wanted to survive, I had to choose someone to follow, he was a good father, wasn't he? The outstretched hand belongs to Jenna, who smiles brightly at Han Islet. Han Islet turns back to see the image. He has also made his decision, reaching out to grasp Jenna's outstretched hand firmly, they shake hands as if sealing some kind of pact, now, they are allies, comrades in arms, sharing life and death together, Jenna, a one star with good intentions towards Han, another one star. A friendship between them is initiated, and as a tip, heroes forming bonds with others will receive additional rewards when they share a team. After joining forces on the battlefield, a while later, Han Islet shouts, Isil, are you here? Immediately, in response to Han's call, the fairy appears, Arg, what now, I'm busy, you know, faced with the fairy's swift appearance, Han can't help but compliment her, you appear faster than someone who's busy. Even if you ask me a hundred times, I won't answer, if you're curious, go climb the tower yourself, the answers are inside the tower, however, suddenly, Han Islet looks at Isil and asks, am I the only one who can see the status window above your head? Isil is completely taken aback by Han Islet's sudden question, momentarily stunned. After a moment of being caught off guard, Isil regains her composure, awkwardly responding, what are you talking about, I don't know what you mean, I can clearly see it says 257. Isil replies to Han Islet, I guess you can see it, ha, huh? is it because your existence has been upgraded when they became one, ah, uh, I shouldn't have said that, clearly, this question has left Isil extremely flustered, after seeing her reaction, I am certain that I am the only one who can see the messages of the game and the messages of the master. Taking a moment to ponder, Han Islet asks again, Isil, what should we do if the master exits the game, Isil replies firmly, master, I can only pray that they don't leave. An accident occurred when Wadav, the master, attempted to fuse with Shay, a four-star ending up fused with a one-star is not a usual accident, the probability of a four-star hero appearing in the free summoning is 1%, and it's lucky that one in 100 of them didn't come true due to a mistake. However, despite Isil's explanation, Han remains unconvinced, he continues to ponder, pick me up as linked to the phone, so they can't just restart it, it's been a week since they logged in after starting the game. To further validate his assumptions, Han Islet turns to Isil and asks, is time here different from Earth, Isil, refusing to answer, even shouts back, don't ask, I won't tell you. 
Observing ISIL's extreme reaction, Han Islet gradually confirms his speculations, this implies that time flows differently here compared to Earth, thanks for the tip, give me more next time, he says with a smile, this only infuriates ISIL more, ah, you one star jerk. Fairies cannot touch me, they can only interfere when in self-defense or when a hero refuses the master's orders, I'm having to learn the rules here one by one, otherwise, I'll die, that's the only law in this world. The outsider who's been eavesdropping finally interrupts the conversation, Jenna, curious, asks, what are you two talking about? Han Islet turns to answer Jenna's question, we're planning to raid the 100th floor of the tower. There's an entity called the Master who can give orders through ISIL, we have to obey them and complete missions, when we reach the 100th floor, we can escape, that's all the information I've gathered, it means we'll continue fighting monsters, so we need to train and become stronger. Jenna finally understands the current situation, but now, it's just the two of them, is it okay, the master can use money to summon someone like us, they're planning to summon many more, our choices from here on out will determine our fate. But in the end, our fate still depends on the master's decisions. After training all day, I've noticed a rather amusing rule here. Essentials and food regenerate every day, if I think about what I want, it will appear in the wardrobe the next day, of course, things like guns won't appear. And there will be other rules when you achieve results from training, something I didn't understand when I played Pick Me Up until now, there will be times when heroes of the same rank have different combat capabilities. They all have one thing in common, they're too lazy to train, training doesn't increase stats or levels, it enhances skills and restores your abilities, now that I think about it, they're not all the same, I didn't consider this from the beginning. If a master has skills, they will classify main heroes into three types, first, intellect. It seems like you're discussing characteristics of heroes in a game or a fictional context, here's the English translation of your text. A master may not easily glance at any hero, first of all, is fear, second, skills, a high-ranked summoned hero has many skills, while most low-ranked heroes have hidden potential that the master must discover. And third, the physique, that's what I'm doing right now. And with that, it's been three days since I started training, the notification frame appeared with the words, welcome to pick me up. The master has connected to the game. Han Islet, 1 star, level 5, apprentice profession, power 15, intelligence 15, vitality 15, agility 15, novice swordsman skill level 1, novice shield usage technique level 1, after reading my self introduction, I received two skills through training, I've given it my all. It seems the master has logged back into the game, meaning the battle is about to begin, get ready, the master is here, Jenna, from afar, paced anxiously, they've arrived, what's the meaning of this, she wondered, it's been three days already. The notification frame appeared, my master will begin summoning, I'm searching for appearing heroes, seeing this information, Han Islet immediately said to Jenna, the master is summoning a new hero, a team will consist of five people, so he will spin three times. Master Waterer has received Aaron, a one-star hero, Master Waterer has received Toby, a one-star hero, Master Waterer has received Yelsons, a one-star hero. After being summoned, the three men arrived at the training ground, despite being summoned, none of them seemed to understand the current situation, the bald, dark-skinned man shouted loudly, where am I, the man in white ahead echoed the same question, exactly. Before they could grasp what was happening, Jenna turned around and yelled, everyone, we need to prepare for battle, We'll teach you once we safely overcome it, of course, before such a surprising statement, the dark-skinned man was astonished, saying, prepare for battle, who are you people? At the same time, ISIL began to give orders, cracks in space open wider, Aaron, the one-star hero, join team 1, Toby, the one-star hero, join team 1, Yelsons, the one-star hero, join team 1. The two men advanced forward, leaving the other three behind, Han Islet said to the person beside him, Jenna, choose your weapon before it's too late hurry, yes, Jenna acknowledged. The notification frame appeared, tip, heroes without equipment will fight with an old iron sword, if you choose equipment in the weapons, they will be equipped, don't forget, you can also designate your weapon. Receiving the notification, Han Islet thought, because everyone died with weapons last time, we have no weapons to spare now, in contrast to Islet and Jenna's readiness for battle, the other three were yelling at ISIL, hurry, let's go back, Jenna had to rush to restrain each one, saying, stop it, it'll be worse if we start a fight with her. The dark-skinned man grew irritated at Jenna's intervention, he turned back to her and yelled, 
are you all in cahoots, did you bring us here, Jenna, reluctantly interrogated, replied, no, it wasn't me, I was pulled here too. Han Islet remained indifferent to the scene, she's just doing her job, they'll figure it out in a few minutes, he thought, without intervention or explanation, chaos was inevitable, the other three men fell into extreme distress, one of them anxiously exclaimed, my wife is waiting for me, take me back, I'm just a poor farmer, you've got the wrong guy, I can't take it anymore, Isil began to grow visibly irritated, are you guys not planning to go in, he snapped, seeing the situation escalate? Jenna couldn't help but turn to Han Islet, asking, are they going to die, they just need to keep their hands off Isil. Suddenly, groans of pain echoed through the air, causing the two men ahead to halt and turn back to look. Listen up, you others, Isil shouted angrily at everyone. But before he could say anything more, the spatial gate expanded into a large door, the scene inside gradually became clear to everyone. Surprisingly, it wasn't an explanation, Isil just stood there, smiling, and said to them, have fun, as she disappeared through the spatial door. The five of them stood together in a circle, surrounded by a green aura, as the scenery outside began to change, the mountains and forests became clearer before their eyes. Three of them were taken aback by the sudden transformation, wondering where they were, meanwhile, Han Islet and Jenna prepared themselves for battle, are you ready, Jenna, Han Islet asked. One by one, monstrous creatures appeared before them, stepped wolves and goblins, with levels 3 and 4 respectively, these goblins seemed even fiercer and more powerful than before. A notification frame popped up, Aaron, 1 star, is terrified, all stats decreased by 30%, Toby, 1 star, is terrified, all stats decreased by 30%, Yelsons, 1 star, is terrified, all stats decreased by 30%, 3 new players entered, horrified to the extreme when facing these monsters, what on earth was going on? Jenna, 1 star, is terrified, all stats decreased by 30%, the notification continued. Han Islet glanced at the teammate beside him, ha, huh, she's scared too, he muttered. Amidst the intense situation, Han Islet casually asked a seemingly irrelevant question, did you eat something really bad, this sudden and unexpected question startled Jenna. As Jenna regained her composure, she immediately snapped at Han Islet, don't tease me like that, but he seemed indifferent to her reaction, instructing her, take care of the two goblins, I'll handle the wolves. A notification appeared, Jenna, one star, is no longer terrified, Han Islet thought to himself, so she was only a little scared, thankfully, he realized that none of the newcomers seemed inclined to help, understanding the dire situation, without additional assistance, the battle would indeed be challenging. They arrived, and the monsters began their assault, Han Islet used his shield to block their initial attacks. The step wolf, with its sharp teeth and scars across its eyes, demonstrated its danger and ferocity, moreover, it seemed to have leveled up, enhancing its strength. Han Islet wasted no time, he grabbed his weapon and charged forward, shouting loudly. Both sides charged at each other fiercely, Han Islet wielded his longsword and thrust it straight into the wolf's mouth, blood splattering everywhere. Despite being stabbed like that, something seemed off, it was still alive, was it because of the shoddy weapon? Not willing to let the tables turn, Han Islet plunged the sword even deeper and then twisted it fiercely into the wolf's wound, completely immobilizing it. Afterward, he unleashed his final technique, cleaving the wolf into two. It seems something's not right after being stabbed like that, but still alive, ha, huh, is it because of this crappy weapon? Regardless, it fell, one wolf down. The carcass of the monster had been divided into five parts, scattered under the sword tree of Han Islet. But at this moment, he sensed a signal of danger, his cold eyes turning back, filled with murderous intent. As expected, behind him lurked the sudden attack of another step wolf, viciously biting into the shield Han Islet held in his hand, fighting with all its might as if avenging its fallen comrade at that moment. Under the weight of the colossal creature and the ferocity of the wolf, Han Islet still struggled to confront the powerful monster, roaring with effort to resist. The right moment arrived, and he swung his shield out, delivering a decisive blow to defeat the wolf. With the long sword in his hand, he exerted all his strength to unleash a final technique, his eyes no longer carrying the softness when conversing with Jenna, but rather exhibiting cold determination. Han Islet's timid demeanor belied his decisive, powerful strikes as he officially slayed the large steppe wolves, their blood staining the grassy plains.
Sweat glistened on his face, which bore a somewhat rugged expression, yet it did nothing to diminish Han Islet's commanding presence, deep within him, he seemed to embody the spirit of a warrior. After dispatching the two step wolves, Han Islet turned to Jenna and the goblins, roaring triumphantly. While Han Islet was engaged in battle, Jenna was far from idle, she exerted all her efforts to defeat every goblin attempting to approach her, each arrow released finding its mark and bringing down her adversaries. Witnessing Jenna's skill, Han Islet couldn't help but express admiration, you've truly become a skilled archer, Jenna, beside him, Jenna breathed heavily from the intense battle, she had given her all, relentlessly firing arrows until the goblins met their demise, Han Islet approached her, recognizing her dedication. Take a break now, Jenna, they're gone, he comforted her, noticing Jenna still appeared emotionally stirred, it was only then that Jenna lowered her bow, breathing heavily, yes, she replied, her voice reflecting a mix of exhaustion and accomplishment. Through the level, Han and Jenna both leveled up, earning rewards of 5,000 gold, 1 grade C iron ore, and 3 grade C animal hides each. After completing the battle, all five of them returned to the circular area at the starting location. Despite their success, each person carried their own emotions and thoughts. A congratulatory message appeared, signaling their advancement to level 3 after successfully clearing the second stage. Having just finished the battle, Jenna felt a sudden panic as they had to move on to the next level, what's happening, she exclaimed, while Han Islet remained calmer, saying, it seems like when we ascended to level 2, now it's level 3. If the master is bold, they might directly push us to level 3, Han Islet continued, casting a glance towards the three newcomers who seemed to pose a significant challenge. Unable to predict what would happen next, all they could do now was wait, Han Islet gazed intently ahead, wondering what awaited them on level 3. The screen suddenly displayed a message, the master is logged out, after a tense moment, Han Islet finally breathed a sigh of relief, it seemed they wouldn't have to engage in another battle after all, this was good news. Surprisingly, the one most jubilant was Isil, who casually stretched out, exclaiming, finally, we're out, Han Islet frowned at her apparent nonchalance, thinking to himself, we were the ones fighting, how can you be tired? Glancing at the closed gate, Han Islet speculated that time seemed to pass slower here, perhaps at a rate of one-third compared to the waiting room outside, he suspected they would log back in after another three days. Han Islet, now at level 6, a novice in the world, boasted strength 17, intellect 14, vitality 16, agility 16, and basic skills in swordsmanship and shield tactics at level 1 each, reviewing his notes, he noticed his intellect had decreased by 1, while his strength had increased by 2, despite having only 4 attribute points left to allocate, his progress was significant, indicating an improvement in his physical capabilities. The master seemed to halt their progression, Han Islet realized that remaining stuck in the mindset of the first level could endanger everyone, however, his thoughts were interrupted by the frustrated outburst of a man nearby, questioning why he had to fight and what kind of place this was with these monsters. Han Islet regarded them with a cold, assessing gaze, one star, he muttered, just ordinary people, far removed from the battlefield, he reiterated his belief that they needed to fight to survive, amidst the murmurs of complaints, someone questioned how they could fight monsters when they had never wielded a weapon before. I think I understand why a one star is called trash now, you're a Mormont, the two star, mentioned that he used to be a Selsword, and those summoned with more combat experience have higher star ratings. High-level sellswords won't be as easily frightened, but if you throw a one-star sellsword into the middle of a battle, they'll definitely panic, unlike those with three stars or more who will jump straight into the fight, they are summoned with combat knowledge, knowing their objectives and the reasons for fighting. I believe Shay knows this, based on her attitude, I'm sure Jenna, having just escaped those unpleasant three, would advance, geez, these people, why doesn't he lend a hand, haha? <laughs> Why should I care about those useless people, we should advise them and make them teammates instead, it's better than nothing. Han disagrees with Jenna's thoughts, he believes the opposite, with those people, they'll soon disappear, and then she'll see. It's not because they'll be killed, but if they continue like this, they'll vanish, she and I will continue fighting in the next battle, regardless of them, just as he finishes speaking, the black man suddenly steps forward, hey, I want to ask you guys something. Seeing this, Han Islet immediately turns around and walks away, he really doesn't care about these people, he'd rather ask someone else, too annoying. The black man, not getting the answer he expected, immediately shows annoyance, he angrily grabs Han Islet by the collar, what did you say? 
Completely impatient with these troublesome people, Han Islet shows no mercy and punches the man in the face, causing him to bitterly fall to the side in pain. The despicable bunch just lounges around while we have to fight outside, it seems like they've been intimidated by Han Islet, the trembling black man says, no, I. The man who got hurt finally gets up with the help of the other two, while Han Islet turns to Jenna and says, see, I did what you wanted, happy now. Since the master has logged out, this time is for strengthening, the next day, Han continues his training, it seems like everything is attainable here, except firearms and weapons, of course. After the basic exercises, we moved on to weapon training, as mentioned, I used a wooden sword while Jenna practiced with a bow, they trained diligently, which was evident from their changed notes, Han's basic swordsmanship has increased to level 2. The other three didn't come to practice, they wandered around trying to find an exit, but of course, they couldn't find one, this place is vast but has no way out. Days of dedicated training like this have indeed paid off, Jenna has become more proficient with the bow, she confidently pulls and releases the arrow forward. While Han Islet constantly improves himself after mock battles with the wooden sword, both of us cooperate seamlessly, Jenna shoots arrows while Han Islet uses his shield and sword to block incoming attacks. However, injuries are inevitable during training, since he couldn't intercept Jenna's arrows, Han Islet accidentally gets shot in the leg. Jenna rushes over upon seeing this, are you okay, Han Islet pulls the arrow out of his leg firmly, despite the pain, but he doesn't show it outwardly, I'm fine, he says, I told you not to worry. Don't expect the usual rules from where you live to apply here, injuries heal quickly here, right after pulling the arrow out of his leg, a stream of glowing light envelopes Han's wound gradually healing it, Han gains pain resistance skills. Immediately afterward, Han picks up his shield and sword again, I won't stop, pain is good, it's evidence that I'm alive. Then the two of them resume training, the echoes of their shouts reverberating around the training ground, stop, then start again. Awakening his skills, the basic swordsmanship and shield techniques have merged into a new skill, Han receives the primary sword and shield mastery, the notification stream is evidence of Han Islet's tremendous effort. Back to the arena, welcome to pick me up, everything is getting restarted. Isil has also appeared, the little fairy always brimming with energy, quickly come to the square when the master appears, do you want to get hit? Jenna stretches, loosening her muscles, and says to Han, perfect, just training alone makes me itch all over, I feel like you're learning faster than me, Han Islet curiously asks, why do you feel like you're learning faster than me, I'm pretty good at this stuff. In contrast to the readiness of the other two, there's been no change with these three, let us out quickly, I'm really tired of eating potatoes, are you planning to let us continue fighting, I don't want to, no way, says Jenna. Clearly, Isil is completely provoked, she has been patient, but it seems they won't leave them alone. She angrily shoves the two who are sulking to another place, I'm angry now, don't make me make you write apology letters. Come here, don't make me come over there and get you, ugh, today you're dead to me, says Isil in a fit of rage, witnessing Isil's anger, all four of them rush into a fight, spare me. After a tumultuous fight, finally, the three of them come to terms with their mistakes, alright, drag yourselves over here, yes, ma'am, they say obediently. Floor 3, Mission Type, Overcome the Target, Eliminate All Enemies, the monsters that are gradually appearing in this level seem to have equipped themselves with iron armor. Their weapons and tactics have advanced, no problem, just fight like we've practiced, Han Islet glances at the situation briefly and concludes with everyone, let's go. As I said, floor 3 is nothing, Han Islet immediately charges forward without hesitation, sword and shield in hand. After a tense battle, both Jenna and Han are exhausted, their reward for completing the stage is a level up for Jenna, 7000 gold, 1 iron ore, and 1 leather from individual rewards. Their faces are covered in sweat, their clothes soaked with blood, wounds, and grime, I guess I've gotten used to these things, Han remarks, yeah, this time was a bit boring. Jenna looks back at the three people who didn't participate, it seems they still refuse to fight, let them be, anyway, I'm not going to share experience points with those who don't fight, if they don't participate, they don't get EXP. Tip, when dealing with disobedient heroes, try spinning the wheel of luck, they'll behave better, floor 1, try the challenge again, yes, or no, seeing such notifications, Han Islet seems to have realized the situation, it seems the master is preparing the wheel of luck, it hasn't ended yet. Floor 1, Mission Type, Overcome the Target, Eliminate All Enemies, once again, 
they are taken to another place, they are brought to the safe zone of floor 1, it seems the master isn't completely indifferent. The scene returns to the battle in floor 1, just like the ones they encountered before. Perhaps because they've fought in this round before and regularly trained to improve their stamina, the return spins are relatively easy for the two of them, hee <laughs> hee, after the stage, Jenna receives 1000 gold as a reward. However, even though they breeze through stages like this, the notification frame still pops up, floor 1, try the challenge again, yes, or no, this makes Han Islet ponder, the master won't let them rest easily if they handle these quickly. They start another battle, and obviously, both of them emerge victorious, after the stage, Han receives 1000 gold, floor 3, mission type, overcome the target, eliminate all enemies, goblin level 4x2, after the stage, Han receives 1000 gold, this continues, and they win each time, from one stage to the next. Easy as it may seem, repeating tasks multiple times can be extremely exhausting, I'm tired, the master won't send us anymore, right, both of them are truly exhausted, Han Islet sits down, breathing heavily, who knows. Both of them have fought fiercely and have to bear the burden of three useless teammates, it's really mentally draining, I'm fed up, how long do we have to take care of those wretches, don't worry, today will be the end. Hearing Han Islet calmly saying so, Jenna asks in surprise, the end, what do you mean, she doesn't see any signs of change in them, Han responds, I don't think the master is free enough to continue maintaining this useless bunch. This gate is different from the previous one, everything is starting up again, and the wind begins to blow. The gate slowly opens, revealing the scene inside as the master begins to synthesize. Three men stand outside, staring in astonishment, asking, where is this? The notification frame appears, drag and drop the heroes you sacrifice for the hero you want to synthesize, the sacrificed heroes will vanish, Han Islet's eyes light up, bidding farewell to those who missed the opportunity given to them. The door to the room is fully opened, revealing the scene inside to everyone outside. At this moment, Han Islet is also observing around, seeing many more opportunities ahead. Even if the small details don't appear on the screen, the master surely knows everything, they must know who fights on the front line, who takes initiative, and who is lazy, they're adding Han to the favorites list, adding Jenna to the favorites list. Suddenly, Isil appears, pointing at the group, Jenna, Yelsons, into the synthesis room, quickly, both Jenna and Yelsons are surprised and anxious, what's going on, Jenna asks, surprised, Han Islet immediately calms her down, go, you'll be fine. Yelsons, the man, steps forward, his dark eyes filled with concern, he asks Han Islet, what will happen if we go in there, we'll surely be judged based on what we've done. Yelsons, panicked, responds, I didn't do anything, I was suddenly pulled here, facing the man's agitation, Han Islet gives him a glance and says, just go in there, Isil stands there, arms crossed, looking at the man, hmm, this is the first time we've had the same thought. Sensing that this isn't good, the man finally starts speaking, so, what do you want me to do, help you, unfortunately, it's too late now, if he had at least pretended to fight, things would have been different, Isil loses patience and shouts, I'm tired of you, just go in there and get it over with. Without waiting for any further reaction, the man is pulled inside immediately, and the door is shut. Do you want to synthesize, yes, no? Yelsons becomes increasingly terrified and anxious, he keeps shouting, it's not fair, let me go. He doesn't even have a chance to finish his sentence, his body is engulfed by a green flame, at this point, the man can only scream in desperation. The synthesis process indeed happens very quickly, it's evident that the master has lost patience with that hero, the synthesis is completed, Jenna levels up and gains the skill eagle eye, Jenna steps out, feeling bewildered, what just happened, he turned into light and disappeared. Han Islet immediately approaches to explain, in this place, the useless ones die to give life to others, now it's my turn. It remains uncertain who among the two will be next. The two remaining men sense the situation turning grim and stand there, unsure of what to do, Isil, beside them, shouts out an order, next is Han and Toby. Toby's face turns pale, completely terrified upon hearing his name called out, me, sweat drips profusely down his forehead. But without receiving any answer or explanation, Han Islet immediately steps forward and enters the room. Trying to comfort himself in the final moments, Toby manages a forced smile, though his face looks truly terrifying now, you guys will let me go, right, he attempts to maintain a smile, though he looks fearful. Right, I'll get to go home, 
right, Han Islet lazily responds, that's right, just think like that. After a moment of intense screaming, the notification frame appears, synthesis complete, Toby turns into light and disappears. Han levels up, receiving the skill calmness, he steps out with a normal demeanor, seemingly unfazed, however, as he passes by the last man of the trio, he whispers to him, you're lucky. Jenna looks at him and responds, so if the master thinks he's useless, he'll disappear in there. Seeing Jenna like that, Han suddenly asks, why do you look sad, you're not someone who wants to be left behind. Jenna crosses her arms, visibly trembling now, if I become useless, then someday this will happen to me too, right? In response to Jenna's concern, Han Islet simply tells her, the higher we go, the stronger the monsters and players we face, we'll either die at the hands of our enemies, or die in sacrifice like that, his words seem to suggest that he knows everything. If you want to live, do as your father said, no need for further explanation, he adds curtly to Jenna. Near the strong ones. Time flies by, and it's already Monday, everyone gathers again at the training ground. Jenna approaches Han Islet, bending down, please support me, she says, seeing her strange behavior, he glances over and asks, what's going on with you? You said you have to be near the strong ones, so I'll befriend the strong ones, please support me, Jenna asserts, determination and resolve evident on her face. I can't believe it, if you work hard, you won't die, so don't worry too much about that, Han reassures her. Suddenly, a loud scream erupts from behind, please support me too, the lucky third man who survived has truly realized the situation. I'm sorry, I've been foolish, I've only caused trouble all along, regardless of what happened, letting you two fight alone was truly cowardly, but from now on, things will be different. Though it sounds unbelievable, how can I trust you, immediately, the man bows down to express his intent, if you want, tell me to kneel, I'll agree, he says, so please, Jenna stands beside, seemingly satisfied with his expression, it seems like he has finally made up his mind. Without further ado, Han Islet grabs the wooden sword nearby, have you ever fought a monster before, I've never fought any monster before coming here, he asks. Han grabs a spear and throws it straight towards the man, showcasing his skill, but it's not just about skill, the difference lies in determination, determination to win or just to survive. Here, take the spear, I'm not an expert, but I've heard it's the easiest weapon to use, give it a try, do you know the basic theory of close combat, mid-range combat, and long-range combat, Han asks. Jenna chips in, oh, close combat uses swords, mid-range uses spears, and for long-range, you use bows and arrows, that's the basic theory, right? Implicitly acknowledging Jenna's answer, Han Islet says, because our team only has three people, that's the most effective way to do it. He holds the wooden sword in his hand, making a move toward the opponent, what are you doing, prepare to fight, Han says. Taken aback by the sudden challenge, the man is surprised, fight, you didn't teach me, he responds. Not waiting for him to prepare, Han Islet charges forward, I've never used a spear before, so what can I teach you, I learned how to fight on my own, so, you should learn on your own too. Be grateful that you have someone to fight against, I only had a dummy as my opponent, Han Islet adds, advancing and delivering a strike toward the man. The man steps back, sweat forming on his forehead, tense as he looks ahead. He now accepts the truth that he has to fight on his own, self-taught, holding the club in his hand, he closes his eyes, using all his strength to lift it up preparing to strike down. He's fighting, and you close your eyes, instead of swinging the club towards him, Han Islet kicks towards him with his leg. This kick makes the guy numb, he vomits out the food from the previous meal, even though he hasn't threatened his life yet, he only did this much, if I were a monster, you would be dead. Jenna realized it might have been a bit too much and spoke up, this is the first time you've done something like this, isn't it a bit too harsh, I don't want to have to take care of others, if they can't keep up, I'll just ignore them. Han Islet looked towards the young man in pain before him, do you have a family, my little sister is waiting, at least you have someone, I have no one. As soon as he finished speaking, he held the wooden sword straight to the young man's neck, causing him to flinch in fear. So what will happen if you can't come back here, he used his eyes, indifferent and cold, to stare straight at the opponent, this is the truth, this is the reality that everyone must face. Dying at the hands of a monster would be terribly painful, even more painful than being overwhelmed, if you don't want to continue, then quit. It seems that these challenges have had an effect on the newcomer, he gritted his teeth, 
imagining that cruel reality. Recognizing that small change, Han Islet looked up at him with a subtly hidden smile. Your spirit is better now, he said, the young man's eyes no longer held fear but rather determination and anger, refusing to accept defeat. Later, an announcement was made, you have chosen the forge, an appendix about level 1 weapons, do you want to build it, it costs 500 gems to build. Han Islet looked towards the newly built piece of land, now I can take a stroll around, and the forge is open now. Isil, if you're here, then leave, Han Islet calmly called out to Isil, who do you think you are to call me like that, Isil replied icily, you never seem friendly, I'm tired of that attitude, try to change it. Of course, anyone would get angry hearing those words, she's the one who sends tips to whatever, right, can she access the internet, if she can intervene in the system, then she must be able to, right. Exactly, I can do that, my hobby is browsing the web, so, the tips I send are being used as a basis, after summoning 10 items, you unlock level 1 training facility, and then you unlock the forge. How did you know, Han Islet asked calmly, that post is very popular on the pick me up page, didn't you know, Loki posted it, you know Loki, right, of course, I'm also a user of pick me up. Hmm, you must only be at the lower levels, Loki is the master of masters, the god of pick me up, if there were a 7 star rating, he'd be at the top of the world. Why do you like Loki, because he turns the impossible into possible, getting a satisfactory answer, oh, turning the impossible into possible, ha, huh? as a pick me up player, you don't even know that. It seems like hitting the nerve of this beautiful fairy, she listed everything she knew about Loki, boasting endlessly. But immediately, Han Islet interrupted her, I'm sorry for giving you this news. Frustrated by the interruption, Isil turned back, what is it? I am Loki. As if hearing some strange words, the funniest in the world, Isil couldn't believe Han Islet's words. The smile on Isil's face suddenly stiffened, and upon hearing Han Islet's next words, she seemed to freeze even more, account number 46631913. To avoid the risk of hacking, Pick Me Up accounts have only one account holder and the server knows it, you can check for yourself, if you still don't believe it, do you need to read the museum account as well? Isil immediately entered the system to verify what the other person said, she couldn't believe it, no way, are you Loki, that's absurd, is this the truth? Suddenly, Isil paused, her expression changing. She exclaimed, then give me your signature right away, you fool, fantastic, with this, I'll become a VIP member of Ragna Loki, completely contrary to the solemn, resentful face just now, Isil now looks even brighter than a flower. Listening to Isil's words, Han Islet, puzzled, asked while holding a pen and paper, what's Ragna Loki, a fan forum for Loki, that's the top of the peak, huh, to become a VIP, you need Loki's signature. Oh, is that so, I'm hearing about it for the first time, he continued, but wait, what about what we said to Loki, are you serious now, he withdrew his previous excited smile, suddenly, Isil felt fearful, worried, and trembling. Ignoring Isil's expression, he said, I currently only have one star, so who cares about those things? Suddenly, Isil jolted herself and exclaimed, wait, what about Nivelheim if you're not here, I wonder about that too. Nivelheim is the name of the waiting system in my account, consisting of 13 floors, all waiting rooms, with a capacity of up to 20,000 people, all infrastructure there is of the highest quality suitable for levels 18 to 22. Even so, what's the point if I, the true master, am here, Han Islet couldn't help but think, no, what will happen to those 20,000 people if you're worried, why don't you let me go back? Before Han Islet's interrogation, Isil said, we cannot do it, we know, we also know you're just an intermediary manager doing trivial tasks. But the owner of this waiting room, whatever, is from Earth, right, and the summoned heroes are not artificial intelligence, suddenly, Han Islet looked up and asked, that's right, this linked world is somewhat different, but they are all human. Master Whatever doesn't know that we are all human, he is just a real player enjoying pick me up, all heroes have to face every danger just to satisfy their entertainment. More importantly, can we go back if we climb to the 100th floor, well, I don't know, I just don't know, Han Islet's suspicious questions gradually became clear, but this one crucial question remained unanswered. The next question, who brought us here, with a cold gaze, glancing at the fairy beside her, Isil helplessly replied, I can't answer that. I'm sorry, it's okay, as you said, 
I'll find out while climbing the tower, Han Islet responded, it seems he already knew that he couldn't get the answer right now, so he wasn't entirely expecting much. In addition, what capabilities does your master have, now I can provide instructions to open and close some physical facilities, as well as support various other activities. Are all master's waiting rooms the same, each room has some differences, but overall they are the same. Do really 100 million worlds coexist, Han Islet pondered the hypotheses in his mind and began to imagine. Summoning Mobius, the system that has created countless heroes by combining thousands of templates, is essentially deception, quantum artificial intelligence, the heroes believed to be artificial intelligence, are actually human. The dungeons, as the system has mentioned, have generated countless content, containing hundreds of millions of worlds. If we say that every world in the game is actually a real world, so, it means that your unconscious choices could potentially kill a hero, ha, huh? terrifying speculations were forming in Han Islet's mind, Isil, um. If you want to climb the tower, remember my words well, that's the only way you can successfully ascend the tower, Isil said as she returned to her extremely cute demeanor, she would do her best to help her idol. After the conversation, it's time to get things done, at the training ground, the straw dummies still stood there, waiting for those who would come to practice, Jenna is a genius, her rate of development couldn't possibly be just one star, even though she has never used a dagger before, she can quickly become familiar with it. On the other hand, Aaron is quite slow, with this pace, sooner or later, he will die. I've been gentle with Aaron, but it seems still a bit too much for him, ha, huh? Jenna said to Han Islet after finishing the fight with Aaron, so, stop being arrogant and follow me, what's going on, aren't you planning to teach your number one subordinate today? Suddenly, Isil appeared out of nowhere and angrily confronted Jenna, who do you think you are, following Han like that, I am his number one subordinate, get lost, however, Jenna refused to back down, asserting, I am the number one subordinate, right. Han Islet, not wanting any more commotion, approached and covered Isil's mouth, she was extremely furious, screaming, you old fox, do you know who this is, your master, don't you have anything better to do? Nevertheless, Loki's number one subordinate is me, remember that well, Han Islet thought helplessly, he regretted mentioning he was Loki, Jenna was completely taken aback by Isil's sudden change in attitude, what's wrong with her, Jenna asked, don't worry about it, she's just a bit foolish, Han Islet replied. Isil, you said I have the authority, right, open the warehouse, Han Islet requested, knowing that his idol was here, Isil quickly agreed, alright, wait a moment. The door immediately opened revealing a room fully stocked with everything necessary and even more. With his one-star power, Han Islet collected six iron ore, three leather hides, and four wooden planks from the warehouse. Isil activated the forge, okay, Han and Isil grabbed a cart, then put their necessary items in it and pulled it away, Jenna quickly asked Han, what are you planning to do, you can't just use a rusty iron sword, Han Islet calmly replied. After talking with Isil, I realized I'm half master and half hero, and if that's the truth, then I can conquer territories, that's the power of a master. This revelation stunned Jenna, she realized that Han had a dual role, which gave him unique capabilities and authority. Loki, what are you doing, Levitian or Bryanak? Isil asked, Han Islet replied, I'm working on something here. With a lack of materials, apply penalties, with a shortage of blacksmiths, apply penalties, with a shortage of blueprints, apply penalties, success rate, terrible, continue refining, yes, no, a notification appeared on the screen. Looking at the blazing forge, Isil thought that the forging method would naturally be, before Isil could finish, Han Islet interrupted and intervened manually. Choose the difficulty of the puzzle, the higher the difficulty, the more enticing the rewards. Seeing this notification, Han Islet understood that it was extremely difficult, super difficult, ha, huh, you've already incurred three penalties, let's see then. This was a mini-game designed for the masters. Most masters wouldn't choose this method, but the rewards are very tempting. After activating the program, a note appeared on the screen, maximum time, three minutes. Beside him, Isil looked at the current situation and said, we haven't even seen its shape yet. But it seemed that this minigame didn't pose any challenge to Han Islet at all, he calmly touched the small square blocks, seemingly effortless. Immediately after, Han Islet commanded, start. Seeing Han Islet's swift and decisive actions, the fangirl's passion surged, 
truly the saint of gamers, the legendary hands that only one in a thousand can possess, she thought to herself. Han Islet utilized his inherent intelligence, effortlessly arranging the work with his hands at lightning speed. The success was phenomenal, Han, with his one-star ability, created a perfectly balanced short bow, a razor-sharp longsword, and a sturdy metal shield. In just a moment, the finely crafted weapons were forged by the master craftsman's hands. These items are all just grade C, huh, I guess I can only do so much with this pile of materials, besides, seeing Han Islet stop early, I asked, aren't you going to do more, a little improvement would make them stand out, I don't want any unnecessary misunderstandings from the master. The sky is dazzling with the sunlight shining down on the green meadow. Jenna is now practicing with her bow, each shot she takes is incredibly strong and decisive. With just one shot, they could immediately eliminate the monster in front of them. At this point, they had begun to ascend to the fourth level of mission objectives, to conquer and wipe out the enemies, Jenna holds the new bow that Han Islet made for her, its flexibility is incredible, with such high-quality gear, later arrivals would surely try to steal them for themselves, but if she uses her personal weapon option, that won't happen. As they reached the fourth level, new monsters appeared, elevated to a more difficult level, master seems a bit excessive, only allowing three of us to attack them, Han Islet observed and quickly assigned tasks, she handled the harpy, Aaron, you protect Jenna, and I'll do my best, sir. After the discussion, the monsters immediately began to attack, rushing towards them. Aaron, in his first direct combat, was extremely nervous but ready to step up to protect Jenna, although he hadn't approached the monsters yet, Aaron swung his long spear. As a result, a notification appeared, Aaron, one star, is frightened, with all stats decreased by 30%, this troublesome kid, he's too excited. He was so panicked that he swung wildly around, while the monsters loomed overhead and he flailed aimlessly below. Things couldn't afford to get worse, Jenna immediately landed a punch on Aaron, calm down, come on, this punch was powerful enough to jolt all of Aaron's senses. You'll die if you fail again, do you understand, Jenna yelled at Aaron, his handsome face now bloodied from the punch. When fighting monsters, unnecessary emotions become the hero's deadliest weapon, stop being afraid, I, I'll try, Aaron declared, the three of them immediately charged at the monsters. Each had their own task, and they fought with all their might to survive. They passed the level, Aaron leveled up to one star, and Han became the MVP with one star, they earned a reward of 10,000 gold, two personal grade C iron ores, and three personal grade C skins. Aaron breathed heavily, his breaths ragged and tired after the exhausting battle just now. No matter how hard he tried, Aaron still felt inadequate, despite his efforts, he didn't show any outstanding performance earlier, he couldn't help but worry about his future. Right after his question ended, the screen immediately displayed a notification, Aaron, one star, has been added to the favorites list, since he was added to the favorites list, it seems like he'll survive after all, that's a relief. Immediately, Aaron shouted loudly, I'm still alive, I'm still alive. Following the number one subordinate seems like the number two subordinate has also matured, right, Jenna smiled happily and looked towards Han Islet, but he didn't understand and asked back, subordinate, which one? He walked straight to the warehouse without saying anything more, thinking about this in his head, subordinate. To be more precise, the number one subordinate is Cirrus from the Niflheim region. The five members in Team 1 all have six stars and are at level 99, at the same time, they have five divine weapons created by me and several supreme skills, if I climb the tower, I might encounter them someday. Because this is an automated game, Cirrus, a deputy master, will manage just fine on his own, if not, there's also Yurnit, both of them are intelligent and bright to the point where I've wondered if they're truly artificial intelligence. Now, upon reflection, they are not truly artificial intelligence, Han Islet's thoughts drifted to some distant place. In that distant place, two figures were standing on the rooftop. One, draped in a white cloak, asked the knight opposite him, Cirrus, do you really have to go, you're in it, you should know that we need to make the most of every second we have. I don't ask for much in this farewell, but I hope you'll pay attention to the investigation, the figure in white spoke up, and I need you to handle the rest of my duties, you're in it. I trust you with the master's territory, Cirrus said decisively after this statement, then walked away without hesitation. Back with the group of three, there was a new notification, the stronghold had leveled up to level two.
and the capacity for heroes had increased. The auxiliary buildings, including the dining hall, have been completed, heroes will now be provided with high-quality meals. Additionally, the training grounds have leveled up to level 2, increasing the effectiveness of hero training. The three auxiliary buildings related to weapons, the assembly workshop, the carpentry workshop, and the equipment refining facility, have combined to become the equipment workshop. The recovery house has leveled up to level 2, meaning the recovery efficiency will be faster. Amidst the sudden changes and the swift materialization of upgrades, Jenna couldn't help but express her surprise, oh my goodness. Aaron also voiced his astonishment, pondering, what just happened, could the master be a supreme wizard, Han Isla chimed in immediately, the master is just using a bit of his power, he has no other choice, this is when everything starts to get interesting. From the diverse feedback of the heroes and the thrilling battles, Waterer will feel more like a real person rather than just binary numbers, he won't be able to stop feeling that way because he's a genuine human being, in summary, after we cleaned up the floors, the waiting room also became more complete. Waterer's activity schedule seems quite fixed, he's likely an office worker, it seems like he experiences attacks quite often, and occasionally, he's capable enough to splurge, Isil appeared with a wry smile, isn't this better than encountering a broke student master, he even bought a $65 pack. Pick me up is it like other games, it doesn't reward gems after completing tasks, and the game hardly has any events that generously give out gems, because the amount of free gems players receive is quite limited, they are likely to value paying players more. Master has started the summoning ritual 10 times, but which hero will be summoned this time? The light emitted from the summoning area, we've also finished watching the house, so what's next, it's time for us to meet new guests. Summoning using gold, also known as regular summoning, and summoning using gems, which is considered premium summoning, of course, summoning using the premium in-game currency will yield more effective results. A series of end notices led 10 people to appear before the large courtyard, all of them bewildered and surprised by the unfamiliar circumstances at the moment, I just got home myself. Han Islet looked at these people with a scrutinizing gaze, wondering if anyone knew what was happening, I don't know if this is real or a dream anymore. Immediately, a sword was drawn in front of the man with a thick beard, he asked in surprise who these people were. Han Islet raised his sword impatiently and said, Silence, I have no intention of explaining things right away to any of you, I'll only explain to those who can survive and calmly reconsider. Isil immediately stepped forward, calling out loudly, Everyone, gather here, any carpenters or leather workers, if so, step forward. Without any explanation, Isil continued to call out to people, Next, any carpenters or leather workers, if not, any chefs, that fairy keeps pointing at everyone, making everyone anxious, what's she up to, hold on, at least explain a bit, what's this situation, what's that little thing, making so much noise like this really annoys Isil, he fell silent. Jenna looked at everyone gathering around Isil and asked, what is she doing? Han Islet promptly replied, assignment, several infrastructures have just been built. If those who have died were summoned now, they might not have to participate in combat, currently, the system inside the waiting room will change. The system inside the waiting room will be changed, and Isil has assigned tasks to everyone. Teams are being formed, pulling, and releasing heroes, Team 2 consists of Zid with 1 star, Hansen with 1 star, John with 1 star, and Teddy with 1 star. If you don't have any special abilities, you must strive to improve yourself, those who are amateurish and incompetent are not worthy of consuming waste anymore. The final master has finally begun to classify those who are useful, and he punishes the one-star individuals by sending them all into a dungeon, quickly go through that door, if you cannot adapt, you will be eliminated, he is probably testing level 1. The door is gradually opening, the crack getting wider, the challenge has arrived. John, with one star, has returned to the embrace of the goddess, his fighting spirit will be remembered forever. One person has already died, if you had explained properly to him, perhaps he wouldn't have died, there's no need to waste words on those who will die from the lowest level. The next announcements appear, Teddy, with one star, has returned to the embrace of the goddess, his fighting spirit will be remembered forever, two have fallen already, at least two must survive. Isil reads out the names of the next groups, Dika, Descard, Sigler, Chloe, she wants us to fight with the star monsters, I can't do it, it's impossible, the new players are completely panicked and terrified. 
At this moment, Aaron suddenly speaks up, I will also fight, Isil finds his behavior strange and says, what, there's no place for you, stay away. Is Aaron always like this, Isil, consider adding Aaron to the team, he lacks combat experience, but it's not a bad idea. Aaron, with one star, wants to join team 3, do you allow it, yes or no? Sometimes, heroes will want to join the battle, they will reveal higher capabilities in battles, which can be helpful, but don't let it become a precedent like me. After a while of reminders, Aaron steps forward and says to Han Islet, I understand. I want to go eat rice, I haven't eaten anything but potatoes since I got here because of this damn master, while everyone is busy preparing to enter the battle, Jenna is extremely hungry, next to Han Islet, he wonders if she knows how to assess the situation. Jenna looks up at the sky and says, the sky is so blue, he is watching us. Like how the deity watches over the world. Don't worry, he must be very busy and doesn't have time to eavesdrop on each of us, he won't hear us, Jenna, with one star, is not satisfied with the food, Han, with one star, is not satisfied with the food either, I'm sure it will be improved and narrowed down before being passed on to the master. After a while, a new announcement appears, the challenge has been completed without any issues, how many goblins did you kill, Aaron, just one, Aaron replies, alright, you understand me then. Let's head back to our place, Han Islet leads the way forward, seeing this, Jenna can't help but feel excited, we're finally liberated from the potato gang, aren't we? Everyone makes their way to the dining hall, the hospitality has now ascended to another level, when they see these changes, the trio truly appreciates how much hardship they endured. Indeed, the improved facilities are much better, having a dining hall means we'll be eating lavish meals from now on, right, as long as the master doesn't see any of us as useless. So, we can consider this as being treated to a premium grilled lamb feast, I want to eat turkey, boss, seeing the expressions of the two, Han Islet runs out of words, forget it, didn't I say I'd kick you out if you're useless? Contrary to the excited faces imagining themselves feasting on delicacies, their reserved table is filled with a basket of plain raw potatoes. Though there are spices, the only ingredient is raw potatoes, the novice chef shouts, and Jenna and Han Islet look at the food on the table with darkened faces. At this moment, the man's behavior makes Han Islet ponder, this guy claims to be a chef, yet. Dolph, 1 star, level 1, occupation, apprentice, strength 12, intelligence 11, vitality 12, agility 10, no skills. Looking at the basic information of the man named Dolph, Han Islet crosses his arms and ponders, he doesn't even have cooking skills, no one has cooking skills here. Suddenly, Han Islet looks towards the nearby woman, Chloe, right, the woman is startled by the sudden attention, um, yes, she replies, Han then says, now you'll be the cook. Do you want to appoint Chloe, one star, as the chef, Dolph, one star, will lose his position, yes or no? Immediately, the man Dolph rushes forward, saying, wait, let me try again, I'll do better this time, he's quick on his feet, but he should choose lies that are easier to cover up. This will be the only time I overlook, Dolph worries, looking pale and fearful after Han Islet's warning. After a while of waiting, the table is filled with a variety of delicious-looking dishes, all made from potatoes, of course, overall, the dining table looks very appealing. Jenna looks at the delicious-smelling food on the table and can't help but exclaim, wow, it looks delicious, I didn't know potatoes could have such diverse flavors, Chloe, feeling shy, responds, that's because I added a lot of spices. A potato wedge skewered by someone's fork catches your attention, while eating, you hear, I won't remind you again. You can remind my words to the next batch of newcomers, that is, if you don't want to wander around and see people dying, Han Islet calmly skewers a potato wedge, preparing to eat. The lights illuminate the dining area, while the night descends, enveloping the surroundings, only the newly established buildings stand tall. Is that so? I haven't fought before coming here either, alright, let's cooperate. So both of us will do different jobs, right, the man standing next to Chloe turns to Han Islet and asks, Anak, Chloe, will you two be the carpenter and the chef, you two will assist us in a different way. Now that there's already a chef, Dolph will naturally have to do something else, oh, I can help with carpentry work too, Dolph suggests, immediately, Han speaks up, if this is another lie, I'll propose you as the first sacrifice for synthesis, I think you'll make perfect material. Indeed, those who avoid combat have a higher chance of survival, but don't be too complacent, 
there are only a certain number of positions available, so if more talented individuals are summoned, you will have to continue fighting. In this expanding world, buildings are rising to accommodate the increasing population, and everyone has their own responsibilities. The next day, my mundane life is disrupted a bit, only three people, ha! Huh? Zid, Hansen, Dyka, three teenagers are joining the training, Jenna smiles and says, I bet the rest of them are scrambling to find a hiding spot in the chaos, I'm tired of sparring with Aaron, a change would be good, Han says with frustration. Aaron sets a bad example, now the kids are starting to call me boss, the difference in our stats is about 7 to 8 points, just like comparing children to adults, I won't be able to reach this level in a short time if this is earth. Jenna's archery skill was already at level 5 when she was new, and her sword proficiency is at level 2. Aaron's negotiation skill has also reached level 2, but he hasn't progressed much further, he was the first to arrive at the training group and the last to leave, but his skills haven't improved rapidly. For these three, each has reached level 1 of swordsmanship, perhaps because of their similar ages, they seem quite close to each other, after finishing their training, one of the boys looks at Han Islet and says, you're really strong, boss, that's because my level is higher, Han responds, another one, upon hearing this, asks, level, you'll find out soon enough, but these kids are much better than those weaklings. In the following days, more teenagers are summoned, and this time, I don't have to do anything, Aaron and the three kids have taken care of everything. Only one person died in the purge, which means the place is becoming more crowded, Jenna remarks, Han Islet replies nonchalantly from behind, and it will increase even more. Thinking about it, Jenna realizes, but why hasn't the master come to the fifth floor, we've cleaned up the fourth floor for quite a while. That's because the fifth floor is a completely different level, the remaining members of Team 1 haven't been assigned yet, Han explains. Every five floors, the difficulty level jumps significantly, akin to a floor containing a boss, it's possible that even I won't survive. Who knows how many people will die, even after the purge and training, I feel it's unnecessary to tell Jenna about the level of brutality that begins now. While waiting for the master to advance to the fifth floor, everyone once again fights on the fourth floor, the mission being to conquer the target and clear out the enemies. Thanks, guys, stay calm, you're holding shields, so usually, you don't need to attack, swordsmen and archers stand right behind, beginners in battle always need guidance from behind. The two of them charge forward with all their readiness and fighting spirit, even if there's worry, it can't stop their steps. The weak have their own way of fighting, you strong youths advance to block the monster's attacks. This is achieved through defensive formation arrangements, where everyone is fully engaged in battle. While the shield team is at the front, members with wounds on their hands have no time to rest, they have already entered a combat and attack state. Using the strength of the whole team instead of individual effort, Aaron, wielding a sword, stabs and kills the monster that is grappling with his teammate. Han Islet observes the situation under his command, he stands there and watches, not engaging in the battle, he knows he can pass this level, but if he joins in, they won't be able to organize their defensive formation. After the level, Zio and Hansen level up, they gain 2000 gold, 1 iron ore, and 1 leather. Still, they don't know what the task for level 5 will be, but surely there will be challenges they can't overcome alone. After winning the recent match, the three kids were extremely happy, they couldn't contain their joy, evident in their eyes and smiles. See that, they're over the moon, Jenna remarked, offering a bit of praise, Han Islet, standing beside her, nodded in agreement, yeah. Master is playing more and more, in his second X10 spin, he received a blacksmith and a leather worker to activate the forge shop. The blacksmith, leather worker, and carpenter worked together to craft equipment, mostly swords and shields of grade E, these were evenly distributed among the newly summoned heroes, significantly improving their chances of survival. The main team received even higher grade equipment. However, the three poorly performing fighters were merged together, they were the ones who never bothered to attend training sessions and constantly tried to avoid them, Dolph was among them, a liar about his profession. Today, are we only going up to the fourth floor, I want to proceed to the next challenge, the young man seemed quite bored with the battles on the fourth floor and desired to experience a more difficult level. Hanisla turned to the fairy beside him and asked, Isil, are we going on a quest today, it's difficult for Isil to give a definite answer, he said uncertainly, Jenna, upon hearing this, immediately inquired, oh, are we really going to the fifth floor? 
This time might be a bit different, it's good to stay calm, but if you're too calm, your heads might roll without you noticing, Han Islet spoke up, trying to boost everyone's spirits, all right, came the reassuring reply. A stream of blue light enveloped them as the portal opened. The first thing that struck their eyes was the desolate and bleak landscape before them, dilapidated buildings, crumbling structures with large cracks extending from the bottom to the tops of the towers. The houses lay in ruins, as if something had swept through and left nothing but devastation in its wake, the eerie emptiness pervaded the air, indicating that this place had been thoroughly abandoned. The five members of their team appeared in this place, all ready for battle. Sir, I don't see any monsters around, one of them said, I'll head into the city and assess the situation first, get the formation ready, they added, responding to the command of Han Islet. With that, everyone moved into action, the city was eerily empty, devoid of any sign of the monsters they expected, there were no civilians either, this didn't seem like a conquest mission. Immediately, the dark-skinned young man exclaimed loudly, drawing the attention of everyone present, hey, over here. They thought a monster had appeared, but instead, he was just a pile of decayed bones, a skeleton, it was impossible to tell how long it had been there. What kind of place is this, there are houses, but no people, he remarked, pointing at dried bloodstains nearby, this mission is unlike any other we've done, those were just warm-ups. Observing for a moment, Han Islet immediately began assigning tasks, Jenna, can you climb up that bell tower over there, he asked, Jenna promptly responded, yes, sir. Meanwhile, down below, Han Islet inquired, do you see anything, Jenna stood atop the tower, scanning the surroundings, well, just the entire city, she replied. But then, she paused abruptly, I hope I'm just seeing things. Aaron, feeling anxious, listened to the situation report, what's going on up there, Jenna, he called out. Jenna, perched above, shouted back, hold on a second, let me see, assessing the situation, Jenna quickly responded, are we okay here, do we have any defenses? There are a lot of goblins outside the city, and it seems they're headed this way, Han Islet exclaimed, how many of them? The scene was enough to send shivers down anyone's spine, thousands of goblins, level 5, survival mission, the goal, withstand the enemy attack. I can't believe what I'm hearing, thousands of goblins, I must be mistaken, Jenna said, almost wishing it wasn't true, her words seemed to confirm the grim reality, and Han Islet, having gathered enough information, instructed Jenna to come down. Aaron immediately asked Han Islet, is there a system malfunction, don't panic, the mission isn't about wiping out the enemy it's just about surviving, we just need to hold our ground against them for a certain period. They tried to enter the houses to find shelter, but those areas were inaccessible, we can't get inside the houses, now, all we can do is move, Jenna said. They were attempting to move forward quickly, how long do we have to hold out, Aaron asked, 10 minutes, just hold the line for 10 minutes after encountering the enemy, Han Islet replied. It's not impossible then, they thought optimistically, however, deep down, Han Islet couldn't shake off the feeling of bad luck. In contrast to the minutes Han Islet initially mentioned, the reality extended to a daunting 30 minutes, they had to endure in this place for half an hour. If a survival mission was assigned in the lower levels, the team's chances of survival were only 9, they couldn't move along the main route and had to dive into alleys, higher level missions were less of a problem, but in lower levels, there was a notorious challenge known as the Hero Crusher. Zid sensed the grim situation, there's nowhere better to go, he said, Han Islet responded promptly, every building is destroyed, so there must be gaps, we don't have time to find another place. They reached the end of the alley, facing a dilemma, they had to defend themselves here. Since the alley was narrow, they would have to fight one by one, even if there were thousands, it wouldn't matter, following Han Islet's instructions, everyone agreed, yes, we'll give it our all. I'll take the left side, Aaron takes the right, Zid, and Hansen cover the rear, fight one by one, if it's not necessary, don't jump in to help, use that time to regain strength, understand, Han Islet instructed, yes, sir, they responded in unison. Jenna, standing at the intersection, tried to conserve ammunition, don't shoot unless I give the order, she instructed, yes, ma'am, came the response. Setting up obstacles before they arrived, Han Islet's stern warning echoed in everyone's mind, remember, if we falter even for a moment, we'll all die, yes, sir, they acknowledged. 30 minutes, since this wasn't a waiting game, time would pass just like on earth, the countdown would start only when they encountered the goblins. 
Suddenly, right before Han Islet's eyes, a monster emerged onto their side of the alley, it was using its abilities to sniff out human scent. It seemed to have detected human breath, the creature's eyes widened, showing its hunger and eagerness for tasty prey. The 30-minute countdown had begun. Han Islet realized the situation was unfolding much faster than he anticipated, oh no, we haven't set up enough obstacles yet, he muttered. As the first responder, Han Islet swiftly used his slashing techniques to dispatch the monster. But as soon as one was down, another took its place, they were closing in, seemingly drawn by each other's scents, rushing towards them like a storm. As they were rushing in, Han Islet saw the difficult situation and immediately came up with the idea of using the corpses of the previous creatures to block them. These monsters were increasingly aggressive, even ferocious, rushing towards their group without hesitation. Wave after wave, they kept coming, numerous and reckless, like rabid dogs. Jenna, seeing the extremely tense situation, shouted from above, let me know when you're tired. It's like a never-ending loop, Han Islet shouted back, block and then stab, they attack so recklessly, almost as foolishly as they look, even in such a dangerous situation, I have to spare a few words to taunt these goblins. Ha, you fools, he exclaimed, these guys truly have no brains, they keep charging like suicidal maniacs, aggressive and stupid. Aaron, fighting harder as the day progresses, had to ask, just need to hold out for 10 minutes, right? Han Islet, gearing up for battle, replied, have I ever lied to you guys, he was doing his utmost to encourage everyone. Don't die meaninglessly in this place, he continued, even if we slaughter these monsters like ants, they keep coming, wave after wave. The golden sunlight poured down onto the city of death, desolate and utterly grim. The horde of monsters remained densely packed, advancing with increasing ferocity and madness. But as always, they would meet their end under the swords of Han Islet, this wave, like the ones before it, would change nothing. Zid, switch with Hassan, Han Islet shouted, recognizing the tense situation and the need to rotate teammates for support. However, Zid remained stubborn, insisting, I can hold on, just switch already. Sweat dripped down his forehead, the wounds on his body multiplying, despite his efforts, his endurance was lacking. These guys are still at low levels, and they don't even have skills, they'll quickly get exhausted from moving too much, everyone will end up gasping for breath, utterly drained, Han Islet explained. One strike is enough, step by step, no unnecessary movements, conserving energy as much as possible, stab, slash, then stab again, these monsters are weak, they're just low-level creatures from the first floor, he continued. But the problem is they're too numerous, like ants, even if we kill them like insects, they don't seem to fear us, they just charge in like they want to commit suicide, he concluded. Hold on a little longer, Han Islet yelled, next switch. Zid stepped forward to support Hansen, got it, this is the most dangerous moment, Hansen replied. At that moment, Han Islet turned to Jenna, Jenna, assist Zid, remember to retrieve your arrows immediately after shooting. Jenna didn't hesitate to act, I've been waiting, she replied, my part includes the goblin horde at the entrance gate. Crystal clear, she affirmed. Aaron noticed that time had surpassed the initial estimate, boss, didn't you say we only had 10 minutes left? Idiot, just 5 minutes left, Han Islet yelled out the announcement, he was diligently battling the monsters but still managed to keep an eye on everyone around. These mindless monsters, from one layer to another, relentlessly advance without any thought, lunging forward to attack. Don't come any closer, I'm fed up with this, Jenna said, her voice filled with frustration as she fired another arrow at the monster that had attacked earlier this relentless onslaught kept everyone on edge. Suddenly, a painful scream echoed out, Zid, a star, was bleeding, his strength slowly diminishing, Zid switched places with Hansen, urging him on, hang in there, Zid. Keep going, don't think about it, just swap out, hold back the goblins, but. Don't cry anymore, when you return, you'll be treated, amidst the confusion and worry of teammates being injured, Han Islet couldn't help but calm them down, adjusting their spirits to help them cope. Zid, a star, was frightened, all of his stats reduced by 30%, my hand, my hand, he cried out in pain, clutching tightly to his own hand. Han Islet felt frustrated seeing him like this, as he continued to slash at the monsters. This wet blanket, even though he says that, he never stops, Han Islet muttered, still trying to kill the monsters advancing towards him. 
Snap out of it, you miserable fool, are you trying to drag us all down? Han Islet didn't cease his criticism, and Zid flinched at his words, I'm sorry, Zid muttered. Jenna, tend to Zid's wounds, Han Islet commanded, and Jenna immediately stepped forward, Zid, remember that Hansen will die if you don't swap with him, Jenna reminded him, Zid tried to strengthen his resolve, yes, I understand. Suddenly, behind Han Islet, a goblin was about to attack. He immediately noticed it and delivered a decisive blow, ending its threat. Let's go back, you wretched mutts, he spat out, kicking the despicable creatures with full disdain. But no matter how many they killed or how hard they kicked, the goblins still swarmed like a relentless tide, increasing in numbers and strength with each passing moment. Hansen shouted, I can't hold the sword any longer, you've held out long enough, and now there's a high chance I'll collapse. Zid, can you take over? Han Islet asked, yes, I can fight, Zid responded, then let's swap, Han Islet said. After swapping positions, Hansen paused to catch his breath, Hansen, check your sword, Han Islet advised, it has fought fiercely and now it's heavily damaged in many places. Indeed, even though it's better than an old iron sword of F rank, it's still just a regular sword, even if it loses its edge, a sword can still be used for combat. And if you feel it's unusable, you still have your shield, despite the ongoing tough battle without release shifts, Han Islet keenly observed everyone's situation, including the goblin horde, Jenna, switch with Aaron, he said, but I can still, Jenna began. It's time for a shift change, Han Islet insisted, recognizing the need for rotation. Jenna rushed forward immediately, take a break while you still can, don't be stubborn. Han Islet shouted out the announcement, just three more minutes, hold on for three more minutes, damn it, thirty minutes feels so long. Aaron, switch with Jenna, he commanded, alright, don't worry, even ten seconds of rest is more than enough, Aaron reassured Jenna. Hansen, switch, Han Islet ordered, yes, coming, Hansen replied, on this side, the two guys were also taking turns to fight. Jenna, shoot arrows towards Hansen, Han Islet instructed, what, but, Right now, Jenna only had three arrows reserved for crucial moments, but the opportunity to use them had come. Anyway, if they can't defend over there, we'll all die, just shoot all the arrows, Han Islet reasoned, the last resort is always difficult, but giving our best in battle is the best option. Okay, I'll do it, Jenna responded without hesitation, and she shot arrows towards Hansen. Under her arrows, no monster survived, the more they advanced, the more they were obliterated. Suddenly, an unexpected event unfolded, something beyond everyone's imagination, a gigantic monster with fierce, blaring eyes appeared. The arrows that struck it seemed to have little effect on its spirit, it immediately snapped the bow that had been shot at it. Zid, exhausted and breathing heavily, sweat streaming down, uttered, Hansen. At that moment, the wretched monster used that arrow to stab him, a shot piercing through his body. The pain was overwhelming. Zid couldn't help but try to stem the continuous flow of blood gushing from his body. Jenna, from behind, immediately raised her bow and shot that monster dead. She immediately panicked and ran closer to Zid when she saw the situation deteriorating. When she reached him, Zid was lying there, heavily wounded, his mouth was still bleeding profusely, his eyes tired and in pain.